doctors write billions of prescriptions every year for pills and tests. This cuts your chances of a heart attack by 12%. They might tell you, but what does that really mean? Physician Andrew Lazarus and environmental scientist Eric Rifkin want to show that many common drugs and procedures have only small benefits, and they hope to do it with hardly any math or numbers. For example, we often hear regular mammograms reduce the risk of dying of breast cancer by 20%. But how many lives do mammograms really save? To answer that question, Lazarus and Rifkin want us to picture a theater full of a thousand people. Imagine every person in the theater is a woman getting regular mammograms. Now, imagine everybody whose lives are saved by those mammograms walks out of the theater. Only one in a thousand? How can the benefit be so tiny? It turns out that even regular mammograms miss some deadly cancers, and some tumors prove fatal even with early detection. At the same time, as many as half those women in the theater receiving regular mammograms over a lifetime will receive false positive results, suggesting there may be cancer when there isn't. 64 women in the theater will get sometimes painful biopsies to check non-cancerous lumps. 10 out of the 1,000 women will receive treatment, including radiation and surgery, for lumps that never would have caused a problem. But what about that 20% risk reduction for mammograms? That's the one woman in the theater whose life is saved. Out of 1,000 women who don't get mammograms, about five will die of breast cancer. Out of 1,000 women who do get mammograms, about four will die anyway. The difference is one life saved out of the five, or 20%. That benefit looks a lot less substantial when it's illustrated with a theater. Some patients who think of the mammogram theater decide they want the screening anyway. Many, however, say no. But the guys say they aren't pressuring patients to avoid pills and tests. They just want people to have a realistic idea of the pros and cons.